Pollock joining us on Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank. And our interview segments are presented by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. And a reminder, if you want to take part in the show, you can give us a call at 724-479-1160 or 724-349-WCCS with your questions for Mr. Pollock. Hmm. Good morning. How are you? Where's your pass? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. I kid. I kid. Good morning, Bob. It's good to see you, though. Good to see you. So we're in prime season for planting now for the home gardener, if anybody is interested in that. But this is obviously not the best weather to be doing this in. But it is good because, once again, we're, we're about to hit a stretch of very warm and some humid weather, but I think it might, I don't know how much it would affect uh, the water levels as we, as we stand right now. Well, I, yeah, I know, you know I'm, I know until, I'm throwing you. Up I'm, until today, you know, yesterday, yeah. you know, we had some very good planting weather. Um, so it was a great time to get things in, get soil worked, get things prepared, mm -hmm. um, and, and get plants in the ground or seeds in the ground. Right. Um, so now we're getting them rained in which is nice because we were getting a little dry. Okay. Uh, so it's good to have get everything a drink of water. Um, so that's – that's So it and then is we'll, – Then we'll go back in the – All right. You know, then we'll hopefully go, we'll dry <laughs> dry yeah. out enough again to – To start to do planting some again. Yeah. yeah. You, don't, you, know, you don't want to plant and stew, <laughs> essentially. Yeah. Well, and, and the other thing that will happen is not only will your desirable plants grow, uh, but when we, we work the soil uh, and then plant things – and then we get rainfall like this, and then the next thing will be uh, not only do the plants grow, but also the weeds will grow mm -hmm. as well. One of the things that was brought up last week, it was uh, brought up by somebody who posted the question on Facebook. And if you're watching us on Facebook Live right now, please, you can submit a question there. We'll try to get it to Bob as quick as we can. But one of the things that came up was uh, the use of eggshells in, in plants and things like that. So composting came to my mind. Mm -hmm. And composting... Is it really as easy as it sounds? It, it's fairly simple. You can make it it's, complex. You can, yeah, you, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, but it's as simple as uh, raking leaves in a pile and uh, letting them there. Um, hmm, okay, you know, and and in doing it that way, um, you have a lot less effort. Uh, you just stick them in a pile mm -hmm. and then let them go. Uh, and about a year later, uh, you'll have most of that pile. And it's amazing how if you stack leaves up. How much they will shrink, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, even a couple of weeks or so, especially if we get a little rain um, on top of them to to pack them down. Right. But that the the microorganisms in the soil, there's there's fungi and bacteria as well as insects, um, all help that decay process get started uh, with a little bit of moisture, and and then off it goes, um, and then we can we can add to that we can corral things mm -hmm. uh, we can build structures um, you know simply out of fence uh, or we can use wood uh, so we can we can get expensive and complex and, yeah. and more detailed uh, for that you know places to stick that material um, and then and there's also a number of different products on the market uh, there's tumblers uh, and things like that that can help you Supposed to be making accelerate, easier yeah. to accelerate and turn the compost uh, versus doing that with a fork uh, by hand, <laughs> you know, and getting in there and turning it over occasionally. Yeah. You don't want to do that too often, right? Um, because you want the pile to to heat a little bit. That's part of the process, uh, getting those materials to break down. I seem to remember a couple of years ago, maybe many moons ago, at the county fair. There was a booth about composting. Yes, and if you and they actually handed out composting kits of some sort. I yeah, think it was we, like a container. Yeah, we had a we had a partnership with DEP at that time, um, a grant program that they were doing to help promote composting. Mm -hmm. And yes, we had the those uh, plastic bins, um, and you, we'd do the compost training, and yeah. then you'd get a bin for uh, participating in that training. Yeah, and that would make it things, at least the heating part of it, at least a little bit easier because yeah, and it, 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 you know, it works like a lid on a stove. Right, smaller scale. Um, they, those were black, mm -hmm. uh, so they helped, they helped retain absorb the heat. and retain heat and, uh, and also made a, a pile quicker, and then they could be disassembled mm -hmm. uh, so that you could turn that material um, and then put it back in there and, 
finish it off. Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank. We're here with Bob Pollock. And again, if you have a question for Bob, you can give us a call, 724-479-1160, 724-349-WCCS. Or if you're watching us live on Facebook, you can send a question to our a chat feature, and we'll try to get it on there as quick as we can. We used to, uh, you know, Memorial Day weekend was really kind of our target uh-huh. uh, for feeling very comfortable about having uh, spring freezes and frosts completed mm-hmm. um this year you know we were ahead of that you know you could have taken a chance and a risk and and planted out early uh-huh. uh, even if you didn't have a way to uh, protect those plants and and gotten away with it you mentioned that i have a correction to make it wasn't my mom doing the planting <laughs> in, in our house it was dad who did all who did a lot of the vegetable planting so i i, I kind of got Falled out about that. Yeah. All right, we have a question. <laughs> that was mentioned to you. Yes, huh? it was mentioned to me, yes. In a, <laughs> oh, boy. So we, we'll continue on. We have a question from Facebook. Cindy is asking us, will zucchini grow well in tomato cages? So obviously, tomato cage, it's meant to kind of hold the vines in on a tomato plant as it grows. Yeah, and there's, so there's so different, zucchini. Different, different kind of cages. Mm-hmm. Um, zucchini is a little bit of a different plant. It's usually not as tall as what a tomato will be Mm -hmm. or grow to be. Um, And it's usually a little more – it's probably not the best thing to do. It's not that they won't work that way. If you need to save space, um, you know, and keep that plant a little more vertical uh, than horizontal, they will spread out. They've got very large leaves, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and they don't – they don't take up a lot of room. Uh, now, the the thing to be, the stems of a tomato plant are more substantial, for the most part, right? Than than the zucchini, they're hollow inside, in right? Those yeah. Leaves. Okay. So they're hollow. So when you're getting them up through the cage, um, you'd really have to be careful about that because you could end up breaking those much easy more mm-hmm. easily so, so um, than it, on a tomato plant. Mm-hmm. And then with a tomato plant, you're usually suckering those plants. You're removing some of those um, stems, branches that are in that tomato plant. Not everybody does that, but you can do that. Um, just to open up the plant a little bit more, um, the, you'll get some vertical uh, branches growing off of the main mm-hmm. branches in a tomato plant, and, and those end up just kind of, making a jungle out of things. Right, yeah. Um, so you can snap those right off with your fingers. Um, that opens up the plant a little bit more, a little more air movement in it. Um, so I, you can try it. You can try it. But um, it's, you not a, it's not normally done. Yeah, so it's not, a, it's not a recommended practice. No, no. Because those plants only get, you know, about three feet high mm-hmm. at the most, and they'll get at least three feet wide. Uh, pretty similar height to width. Um, but if you need to save space, you could try that. And the bigger cages would probably work better um, than the smaller cages uh, would for that. And, and the, mm-hmm. the fruit on the zucchini yeah. are all pretty much, you know, within the base of that plant, within the bottom foot anyway. Yeah, so it's... Get, they're flowering. Um, of course, on zucchini, the male flowers come out first Mm -hmm. Um, so sometimes you'll think you're uh, oh yeah there's flowers there and the crop's starting um you still have to wait a couple weeks yeah those uh they they can come out at least a week ahead of of when the female flowers come out and and so you'll it'll look like they're starting to make a little fruit on there and then they're not Mm -hmm. um they drop off and and die and some people will pick those um Mm -hmm. so those can be eaten uh, a lot yeah. of different chefs will will uh, use that in their. I I love zucchini cooking. noodles. I love zucchini noodles. That's what I that's what I normally like to do with them. But it seems like everybody gets zucchini. <laughs> you know, it, it it grows very well up here for the most part. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And it's it's one you can push a little bit with when you plant it. You mm-hmm. can get it out a little earlier. You know, it's a it's a more warm season crop but yet it'll withstand a little bit of cooler temperatures that mm-hmm. you could definitely have them out yeah. side unprotected at this point 
um, and have planted them a little earlier than some of the other, like pumpkins and other squash. Yeah. Um, zucchini, you can plant a little sooner. Yeah. It's definitely a little bit thicker skin, I think, because of yeah. that. And I think tougher. it protects it from the, from the elements. Won't protect it from a spiralizer, though. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, we're just about at the mark. Thank you, though, for, for coming back in. Can't wait, to talk, can't wait to hear from you next week. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thanks again to Bob Pollock of the Cooperative Extension joining us on Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank. Our interviews presented by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people.